Hello and welcome back to Steam It With Steve. Today we're going to deviate a little bit away from the Python course that we've been following and learn about something called pseudocode. Now pseudocode is super important. Basically it allows you to write your code in a way that other people can understand. Now pseudocode is meant to be written like English so that other people can pick it up and understand what you're trying to communicate. It's really important for um, most schools will have some sort of exam and what they'll get you to do is write out the pseudocode version of your algorithm. And that's what we're gonna follow. So we're gonna follow the New South Wales Nessa pseudocode structure, which is really good. And it's very clear what you have to do. So let's jump on in. So to start, I've got a bit of a bad um, flowchart zombie joke here. So basically there's zombies are everywhere. A question's been asked with the diamond. So is this guy a zombie? And if it's yes, escape if it's no yes he is and then you die if you can escape no well you die and then if it's yes you hide in a small confined space with a group of people from different backgrounds and you still end up meeting a bad fate so this is basically how a flowchart sort of looks and we're going to unpackage that a little bit further with some pseudocode afterwards so the learning intentions that we have today is understanding the concept of an algorithm and their importance inside of computer science we're going to learn about the different statement structures, so sequence, selection, repetition, and how that looks with a flowchart and the pseudocode. And then we're going to develop some skills in creating and interpreting flowcharts and the pseudocode that we've learned. And then at, right at the end, I'm going to teach you about the divide and conquer method for problem solving. So how do you break down the task into smaller tasks and so on. So the first question is, what is an algorithm? So people hear that word and they think, oh, that's a really hard word. And it's a word used by programmers when they don't want to explain what they're doing. Well, it's not that hard. Basically, it's a step-by-step -step procedure for solving a problem. Okay, So when um, making the algorithm, we've got to always consider the correctness, the clarity, the appropriate control structures that are used, the embodiment of the structured methods. So how does the function sort of link together? So statement structures will always follow this. There will always be a sequence. So these are the instructions followed by step-by-step. There can then always be a selection. So if an answer to a question is yes, go this way, otherwise go no, follow this one. Or there's repetition, which is doing the loops and following that code over and over and over. So there's two ways that we can show an algorithm. We can either use pseudocode, which looks like this, which we'll probably focus more on eventually. So if you get this game, um, Game has been guessed. If your guess is equal to my guess, well, well done, you guessed my number. Otherwise, that's not correct. Or we can write that exactly the same in a flowchart. Now, flowcharts are a little bit easy to read because you sort of just follow along and you can understand. Whereas pseudocode is probably a bit um, more compact and eventually you will get used to sort of the structure that happens behind the scenes. But both these two represent exactly the same thing of an algorithm. So a flowchart, um, here's another one that I found. So draw a picture. Did they guess it? No, point at the same picture repeatedly. And that's a bit of a meta joke. Did you get it yet? Have you gotten it? No. Well, still keep pointing at it. And then as soon as you did get it, yes, you win. And then you can exit out of the, um, the loop that was trapped. So flowchart symbols, you need to know all of these. And they're not that hard. So basically connecting each of the paths is a flow line, which is just a simple arrow. And then whatever direction the arrow is pointed shows the flow of control. You always have terminators, which is the start at the end. Generally speaking, you should only have one start and one end. So there's a very clear way that the program will follow and then always have a terminating end. Parallelograms is inputs and outputs, right? So when you're thinking about your inputs and outputs, you use a parallelogram. A process is an action. So that's why we use a square. And then the last one is a diamond is used for decision. So I just remember a D and a D. And that's for any of the logic that has to happen. So whether it's sequences or repetition that you need to follow, anytime that a condition has been checked, it needs to have the diamond for that decision. And then lastly, at the end, you have a sub program, which looks exactly the same as a process, except it has two line racing stripes on the side, which signifies that you, there's another flow chart that exists that unpackages how that sub program program would look. So first activity, um, I want you to create your own flow chart. And it can be just something simple that you do at home. So I don't know, um, baking a cake, uh, cleaning your house, cleaning your bedroom, whatever it is, I don't mind, have a play and see if you can get it going. 
give an example there um, that can show you how it works. But yeah, play around with it, have some fun. Cool, so hopefully you had a go at that activity. We're moving on to the next one. So pseudocode is a little bit more complex, but it's a lot, it gets a lot more specific and sort of easier to read as well. So when you write your pseudocode, you always go begin and then you always have an end. You then say the name of the function. So in this case, it was called get guess. And then every time that you use a control structure, whether it's an if statement or a loop, um, you basically need to have a thing called ordered pairs. So wherever there's an if, there needs to be an end if. Just to link it. And then display basically works exactly the same as print in Python. So that should be too foreign. Cool. So this is a simple way of writing programming code, but it's a bit more English-like, so it's not as overwhelming. There's a divine, defined rule of um, structures and keywords. It uses clear, natural, um, human-readable language as well, so that's a bit easier. The important thing here is pseudocode is not a programming language. So let me say that again, pseudocode is not a programming language. It's built so that other people can pick up the code and then they can convert it into their language of choice. So you might look at the pseudocode and then go, well, actually I'm gonna develop this in C instead of Python. But because it's been made in a nice generic way with the pseudocode, it, it's a little, it's, it allows that transferability. So I found this, which was pretty cool. So this is the pseudocode guidelines and you need to know this off by heart if you're in the New South Wales system. So keywords are always written in capital letters. So these are your reserve words. So if, else, for will always be in capital letters. Any structural element always comes in pairs. So for every beginning, there is an end. So for every if statement, there's an end if. Um, for for loops, there's the next statement. For while loops, there's an end while. There's this pairing between the two. Indenting, indenten, indenting is used to identify control structures in the algorithm. And then the name of the separate programs that you use. So if you're gonna reference another program elsewhere, you need to have an underline underneath it. Variables are always written in camel case. So for example, total score. And functions are always written in Pascal case. So add field gold. To output text, we use display. So for example, display, you won the game, which is very similar to print, but for Nessa, we have to follow um, these guidelines. So here's some examples of the six different structures you really need to know. So for every function or procedure, there's begin, and then there's an end. For every binary choice, it has if, and then an end if, but notice after the if statement, there needs to be a then in capital letters. Then is like your snaky Y. That's the easiest way I remember it. And then you've got your else afterwards. You can then do it um, like a match statement, which we call caseware. What happens is you do caseware and give it a value, and then you give it all the different options and then the action that you want to take at, um, for each of those actions. I'm um, sorry, also with if statements, you can now use else elif as well. So you can do multiple um, statements down the line. For pre-tests, you then would have a while, so while this condition, and then have the statements, and then afterwards you would have end the while. For post-test repetition, which is a little bit different, and we'll unpackage that, is you can have repeat, and then until the condition occurs. So post-test and pre-test are slightly different, but we'll go through what they mean. And then the last one you can use for loops, um, which is basically for or next. So for, and then this is where it gets a little bit different, you can go x is equal to one, two, 10. Then you optionally can say step one, which basically means going up by one, have the variables underneath, and then at the end, you have next variable. So what you should see is there's always an order pair. So there's always something wrapped around it. Now this is just so that it's very clear where your variable, where your loops are ending. So when the person marking your assignments or your written exams can understand, oh, actually, yep, they understand that's where the loop ended. So they've made that very clear. There is also the NASA guidelines, which is really useful. So that this has just come out. Um, I would highly recommend opening that up and having a read through by yourselves. So if you scroll all the way down here, past all this, you will see this part section here, which goes through all the algorithms that you can use. So inside here, you should know pseudocode and flowcharts 
and then there's what we just talked about that there needs to be an auto pairing indenting and then solving the problem as best you can there's all the different things that we talked about before in the flow chart so subroutine input and output the terminator the process and then lastly the diamond decision and then you have all your different control structures so sequence pretty much flows exactly as what we've done before in python and this is why i love teaching python first before doing pseudo code so you've got a language to play with you then have a binary selection so this is the post box version so if this condition is true then do this and then notice it's got the end if the binary selection then has if um, then this else do this which is like the fork in the road so you can either go this way or you can go this way but you can't go both and then you have multi-way selection which is like the match statement so you can have case where this is the choice you either go this way or this way and then it branches all the way out you can also use else if which is really cool so this is um, for nested if statements um, so this is like the interrogation that we've covered before but notice that it's not just L if in Python, like what it is in Python. So it's else if you have to write that, otherwise it's not um, considered good, um, valid. And then notice the end if at the end as well. You then have repetition. So this is what a pretest is, which is what all our loops are that we've done so far. So you check this condition first, then you do the process and then wrap around. Whereas a post test is slightly different. What happens here is you repeat the process until the condition is true. So what this means is you, with a post test is you're always guaranteed of doing this action at least once, right? And then if it's um, if it does until that condition is true, you keep going on and on and on, and then you exit the loop. Whereas the post test, a pre test, basically checks the condition first, then executes. So a post test post test is a little bit different. Then you've got a for loop, which is what we've seen before. So for variable to start, um, variable is equal to start to the finish point. And then this bit here is optional. And then you must say at the end, because it's got to have an order to pair, the next variable that goes with that. We can also then do subroutines. So you can write your separate routines where you just literally write out all the names of the, the functions that you want to execute, which is what this does. And then underneath you can have those um, sort of unpackaged with more description. So there's read name and that read address. So it uses the read function that uses with two different inputs, which is kind of cool. You can also then use multiple parameters. So you can put in multiple things into the add function here and it will go through it. And then the last thing that you need to be aware of is that you can pass back values. So for example, here, this is displaying out um, the value that came from add and then notice that this is another keyword that you can use which is return at the end so that's pretty much all of the pseudocode guidelines which we're going to unpackage a bit more but that was just a quick little description so you're seeing it and it's not as overwhelming when we unpackage this further so what i'd like for you to do now is convert your flow chart into the pseudocode so go back um, to the original description with all those different things and see if you can convert the if statements in the right places the while loops into the right right places and then also get it displaying some stuff so just pause the video and have a go cool so another thing to think about um, I've got a little example here is how many stamps do you need when you mail a letter? Well, there's a rule of thumb that basically there's one stamp for every five sheets of paper or a fraction of thereof. So if we were to convert this into an algorithm, have a think, pause the video and see if you can actually get that working. Cool. So the process to get this right is basically you need to work out the inputs, what needs to occur, and then the output. This is what we call a task list. So to start, you're going to request how many sheets of paper there are. I'm going to store that in a variable called sheets. We're then going to divide that sheets by five, right? By um, dividing it down. And then instead of just rounding it down, we're going to um, do a thing called the ceiling, which then automatically raises the number up. So if it was 5.2, boom, that becomes six sheets, uh, six uh, stamps that you would need. If it was just five though, it would stay as just five. So rounding the quotient up to the next highest whole number, and then we store that in a variable called stamps. And then the output given back to the user is a thing called stamps. So this is what we call a task list. Just starting to get your head around how IPOs and sort of diagrams work. 
which shows the input, the process, and then the output. So a sequencing example here, if we begin, we're gonna read the sheets. So that's a parallelogram, because that's an input coming into the system. From that, we're then gonna set the stamps is equal to the sheets divided by five. From that, we're then gonna round the number up to the nearest whole number. And then from that, we're gonna display the stamps because again, that is an output. So I'll use the parallelogram. And then we end it. So notice there's a clear beginning and then there's a clear end at the end there. That's the flowchart version. And then there's the pseudocode. So pseudocode, um, begin stamp chart. So get stamps, stamps is equal to sheets divided by five, round the stamps, display the stamps, end. So pseudocode, like I said, um, is the text version, whereas the flowchart has those nice pictures to make it a bit clearer. So you need to understand when's the right time to use both or either of them. So the last thing I wanna unpackage is the divide and conquer method. So basically this is used in problem solving, taking a large problem and breaking it down to smaller problems. So break the problem down into modules. And what happens is basically you start, you can either do the top down approach or the bottom up, right? But what happens is you have a problem at the top and then you keep splitting it down into the smallest type of problem that you need to solve. So you might be just wanting to round, you might want to have something that just always adds 10% to something. And then once you've got that, you then integrate them back up into the smaller problems all the way up until you've solved the main problem. Now the main problem at the top there, we also call that the main line, which is how your program sort of runs. So in a game, that would be the thing that controls where all the enemies are, um, where the player controls are coming in, all that sort of stuff gets handled there. The whole point of this pseudocode is to try and make it language independent. So that's the point behind this. So resist the urge to write whatever language you're most comfortable, because sometimes people might not understand Python. So by using something a bit more universal like pseudocode, it gives you that opportunity. So remember when you're doing this, you're describing the logic plan to develop the program. You're not actually programming it yet. So you're describing what needs to happen. And then there's a good little motivation speech. Um, so always try your best and do what you need to do while you still have time. The opportunity comes only once, so grab the chance. If you fail, throw all your worries, catch yourself every time you fail, fall. You should know to whom you should always go to, always. So some conclusion questions to wrap this up. How would you explain the concept of an algorithm to someone with no computer science background? Can you think of an everyday activity that, that can we represent as a flowchart or a pseudocode, and then how might the pseudocode, the skills learned today be more useful in other subjects or real life situations? There is a little kahoot at the end here, which is a bit of fun. Um, and there is a bit of a meme joke here for the homework. Uh, there is pseudocode. A lot of people think Python and pseudocode are pretty much the same, which there are, are a lot of similarities and Python is a lot easier than some of the languages. Um, but please, please, please make sure you write the pseudocode, not the Python code when you're asked these style of questions. That's it for me. Hopefully that's given you some insight into the how Nessa pseudocode sort of looks and how you can put that together for your um, written class. The more you practice with these pseudocode questions, the better you'll get. Um, I've actually got three separate sheets with um, easy level, medium, and then really difficult um, pseudocode questions. It's very important that you practice these as much as you can. The more you practice, the better you'll become, obviously. That's pretty much the get-go. So hopefully you've learned something. If you've got any questions, pop them down in the um, comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video and it's been useful, please give us a like and subscribe. Um, the whole mission is to try and make sure everyone gets access to learning how to uh, learn Python and pseudocode. Um, and yeah, thanks for listening. See you next time on Steam It With Steve. Adios.